What's up guys? You are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha. And today we're going to be talking about a book called Cold Granite. And this is by Stuart McBride. And this is a, what do you call it? Like a cop crime thriller. Yeah, like another detective novel. Yes. So I'm going to read you the plot. It is Logan McRae's first week back after being on sick leave for a year, courtesy of Angus Robertson, the Maastricht monster who carved him up with a knife. Someone is kidnapping children, murdering them, and mutilating them afterwards. The local paper screams about police incompetence and is gunning for McRae's boss, Detective Inspector David Inch. McRae discovers that someone is leaking the stories to a journalist, Colin Miller, who inadvertently disrupts Grampian Police's plans to apprehend the killer by revealing their plan to wait out in a secluded location, which the killer thinks is safe. McRae discovers that Miller's source is none other than his ex-girlfriend, Isabel McAllister, the police pathologist who is now living with Miller and tells him about her day to unwind. Meanwhile, the local council worker who removes all the dead animals from the roads, affectionately called Roadkill, is found to have a dead girl in his tip, and another dead girl is discovered on the local rubbish dump. So, before we start, a little bit of a warning if you're going to read this book. Um, if you have kids, especially if you have kids, this book is kind of sensitive. Um, it yeah. is about children ages like... Four to like five. Four, yeah, like little kids, like toddler age children. Yeah. Um, and it does have very explicit details and... Some graphic content. It's very disturbing. Um, but it overall, like so far, it has been like a good book. Um, it just makes you angry. I think the thing about it is, is that from what I've read so far, is it's not, like, super gross detail. Yeah. It's very clinical in the way that it describes yes. like, these murders. But uh, not so much so that it does, it gets grotesque. Right. And, it, and the author is not insensitive. It, he just kind of leaves things up to your own devices, like your own imagination. And I think, I think that's kind of worse because, like, you go so far with your mind. And especially, yeah. like, I think for us as parents of little kids like this age. Mm-hmm. Everything is amplified and more horrifying because, like, what if, you know? Yeah, so, and that's what I was thinking, like, the entire time I was reading it. I was just, like, just thinking, oh, gosh, what if this happens to yeah. my kid? And I'm just, like, Ugh. But, um, so far, I really enjoyed, I well, I am enjoying the book. Um, I have absolutely no idea who the killer is. I have some theories, um, but basically what's going on is that they find they find a kid that's murdered he's like a three-year-old boy yes and he's been on the side of the road for like three months i think yes which is so sad yes. i just like i don't know why we like when we started this i was like why do we pick these things i know <laughs> and then they find another they find a little girl <laughs> yeah. in a trash bag yep. in the woods and so and then they find a little girl that's as the description said, um, is buried under all these dead animals in this, um, this person, city like, representative's um, home. Well, home, it's basically just like a disgusting, like... Ran down, like, kind of... Basically just like a dead like, animal house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so this guy has gone, like, off the rails. He's obviously not actively like working for the city he's just kind of homeless and just walks around and he picks up these dead things yeah and so he picks up this dead girl and he just in his mind it's not a person it's just a dead thing i think he's not mentally like clear what's happening when yeah. he does this because i don't think that it's him i don't think that the author would give it away like that yeah um i think it's just like a sad unfortunate situation for this right. person mentally um because the killer is because somebody is leaking something at the police station and to the media before any of the detectives can get, like, a uh, jump on what's going on. And then also, the killer doesn't really have, like, this M.O. Like, right. it doesn't have a consistent pattern. It's not just boys. It's not just girls. It's Which not makes just... you think maybe it's, like, two different cases. Right. And that they're not connected in some kind of a way. But the killing amps up. Like, it gets yeah. worse and worse and more and more. Um, 
And this is like this guy's first case back too, after he's yeah. like supposedly like stabbed by like the a master monster. Times. Yeah, which I I think we were talking about like we wish they would have like gone into that a little bit. Yes. And they haven't as of now, but I think that would be really interesting um, if they had, like, a backstory about, like, what went on with that. Because a person named the Master Monster sounds pretty interesting. I want to read yeah, about that. Yeah, and I guess, like, at the time, um, Logan, is that the guy's yes, his name? Yes, Logan. Um, is dating Isabel, which is, the like, the coroner or, like, yes. um, and they're dating. And at the time, this monster that he's chasing abducts Isabel, his girlfriend, steals her away so when he goes to get her apparently he gets cut up real bad yeah. and it's like this crazy surgery to put him back together and like but that's all you know like that's all they give you yeah so we're just like and that I feel, would actually be a really cool book i feel like it's like a like a foreshadow of like what's gonna come in like yeah. his later books like maybe he like gets out of jail or like there's a copycat killer yeah something like that i think it would be really cool to go into that backstory like they yeah. get back together and like unveil like things like what even though isabel's kind of like trash throughout the book like (laughs) she she was just irritating me throughout the whole book and you don't really know why they break up at least i don't yet so maybe she got like cold feet like or maybe it was so traumatic yeah we went through too much or like you you let him get me and now like i'm mad at you yeah even though he saved her like i don't know so that was really cool um, so maybe there's maybe the author is setting up for that. Um, I think that I had one theory that I'm sticking by. I had one theory about the um because they find a little girl wrapped up in a trash bag and they find something in the trash bag that leads them back to this apartment. Mm-hmm. And when they're walking into the apartment to go like break down this do- guy's door and be like, uh, yo, you're arrested for like murder because we found your stuff in the trash bag. Yeah. They pass his neighbor, and his neighbor, they describe him as, like, looking frightened and, like, just panicking as to why police are there. And I'm just, like, I mean, it was, like, he's the killer because he took his trash bag and he oh, put this and girl. tried to, like, cover it up. Like, yeah. So that's my theory. That's what yeah. I think happened. And I think that maybe there is, like, because this guy's M.O. is, like, mostly boys but then there's just like like this random girl that comes in yeah she's this dead girl and so i think that maybe that's like something different and they're to try to throw you off they're clearly estranged like the first thing that you read is this person like explaining like how it's so beautiful like the end game of his kill and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and it's even more chilling than children, I think. It's just it's just awful. But, I mean, it's still, like I said, it's not so bad that, it's bad. But it's not so bad that it's just, like, unnecessarily, like, gross and disgusting. And Yeah. Because some people do too much. Yeah, and so far, I think I give this book, like, a, I give this book, like, a four so far. Because yeah, I am, same. my only complaints is that it is um, British, and I, it's, it's a Scottish. little hard Scottish. We found out. Yeah. And it is a little harder for me to like relate. Under- and yeah, and understand. understand some of like the things that they say or like some of the like language because like they're funny phrases and like they're like Yeah. I don't know. I and know. there's a lot of like weird names. Not like not like weird names, but like different well, names. I can't pronounce them very well. <laughs> yeah. And so like I get I think I get confused as to like what, like, who's this character, like, remembering yeah. that throughout the book and, like, connecting it, because, like, the names are so unique that you can't just, like, think back and be like, oh, Brown or Smith. They're just, like, yeah, McRae and... They're not as generic as our names, usually. Yeah. Um, and it, but it's not as bad as the call, as the call but yeah. that was, like, I had to skip over things and, like, try to, like, yeah. guess names, but it was still, like... It still was enough to trip me up and slow me down, Try, and I'm slow already, <laughs> trying to read. So I was just like, okay, who who is this person? How do you say this? And it's Isobel, not like Isabel. Isobel. Like I-S-O-B-E-L, Isabel. Yeah. I don't even know if I said that right. Isabel. Isabel or something like that. Isabel. I don't know. I mean, it's, they're, they're it's beautiful names. They're like Scottish. Something pronounced. gorgeous, and I'm destroying it completely. Yeah. 
But this book, we would highly recommend it, especially if you liked all of our Josie Quinn stuff. Yes. It's along those lines, but a little bit more intense, I think. Yes, and I also just read a book um, that kind of reminded me of this book that I really, really liked, even more than I am liking this book so far. It's called um, uh, None Shall Live by <sighs> Ellie Marnie. And I, I told Beth Ann to read this book because it's, um, it kind of gives like natural series vibes. It's about this, these young, um, this young survivor of a serial killer that is getting recruited by the FBI to study young adult serial killers. What's it called again? None shall live. None shall, None shall sleep. None shall live. None shall sleep. Maybe. All I could think was. Now, now it's gonna bug me. If none shall sleep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. None shall sleep by I Ellie Marty. Yeah. And that book was really, really good. It Obviously, looks like it's be a series. Yes, there is gonna be a second book, but it has not came out yet. So I'm hoping that it does. If you want to keep up with us, I think that Samantha is so impressed that we're gonna read this. Yes. Um. Ten. And she likes it, I think, even more than the natural series. It is like, oh gosh, I don't even know. It is like a close tie. Like, I That's might pretty. like it. I think that you're going to be really fascinated with the main, Character? like, serial killer. Oh, okay. He is fascinating. Like, hmm. he, it's, it's bad because, like, you I don't want to, you don't want to have, like, you don't want to relate with a serial killer and have, yeah. like, like, like the person or like have sympathy for them oh. but like you do of course i don't even though he's like them. he's vicious he's like a crazy serial killer it's too much but he's like he's like oh geez i'm gonna see if it's on hoopla or not hoopla it is on libby okay i'm there but nolan is re listening to it right now so it could be on oh ebook. it's on hold so i'm gonna put it on hold i'll have it in time to actually have time to listen to it because yes. i am probably going to Yes, and don't get it confused with none and and none shall sleep. That's Priscilla Masters. I don't know anything about that. It's Ellie Marnie, None Shall Sleep. We have the audiobook and the ebook. And then I bet you, since we have both of those on um, Overdrive, we have it as a physical copy here. Yes, we do. Um, and then also, I know for a fact that we have Cold Granite as I have suggested it as an audiobook. It is an ebook on um it did get approved Overdrive. for the audiobook. It did? Yes, okay. I got a notification. Heck yeah, man. Why didn't I get a notification? I think it's because you had me submit it. Really? Yeah. But yeah, that is um, an ebook and audiobook format. And it is here in person if you want to um, grab it up. I'm honestly surprised that we picked up a Stuart McBride book because he's such a popular author and we tend to like not read super popular authors. But it like. is actually pretty good and it wasn't disappointing. Like I'm not a big fan of like mass produced like authors like James, James Patterson, Patterson who just throw 800 things out and I can't even. Yeah. And so. <laughs> like I don't think I would ever pick up a James Patterson book but I could be wrong. I have read one or two that I didn't. Yeah. I didn't like. I don't think they would be thrilling enough for me. No, and he also helps other authors get out there and like approves their stuff and helps them write. Yeah. And I think I tried to read Zoo once, and it was. That's a show. Is that a show now? It, it was made into a show, but I didn't like the show either. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think. I don't think I watched it, but. Yeah. I saw that no was offense to everybody who loves James Patterson because, like, if you love James Patterson and that's your binge read, you binge read some James but Patterson. But also, don't just default to James Patterson because he has 800,000 books. Yes, there are other things out there. So if you're looking for similar things that are yes. a little bit more gripping, then this might be for you. Stuart McBride. And Nine Elms by Robert Brinza, also yes. fantastic. And he does the Night Soccer series as yes. well, which um, we have books one and two we need to read for that as well. Yes. Um, yeah. Any Jennifer Lynn Barnes book, obviously, we'll always suggest. They're a little lighter if you're not into, like, so much gore. Yeah, graphic um, detail. We've got They're options more mystery. for you. Like, if you want some suggestions. Maureen Johnson, Trinity Yeah, though. Yeah. yeah, that's true. 
Yes, so you guys should join us um, for our next episode. We are going to be reviewing Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviard. Um, she is one of my favorite authors. Actually, you know what? I can't even say she's my favorite author. I would say she is like my favorite author, like my favorite personality. Like she's got like a great personality. I follow her on you, TikTok. What else have you read by Victoria Aviard? Mm -hmm. I have read part of the um, Red Queen series. I'm finishing up oh, that. Oh, I didn't know she wrote that. Okay, and that's a uh, is that a romance? Um, no, there's a little bit, but it's very, it's like, like, it's very, like, female-driven, um, okay. if you like that, and very, um, a lot more action than romance, like, more romance would be, like, Sarah J. Mass. Okay. Um, this is more, like, action and, like, I will conquer type Yeah, books, this is, like, so. a 400-something page book that I'm... <sighs> <laughs> Crickets. It's going to be... <laughs> I am looking, it has amazing reviews. Like, yeah. people are ranting it. It's like a 4.8, I think. Yeah, and her, the um, sequel just came out called Blade Breaker. And yes. I just, I really love the cover art, too. It's really pretty. Yeah. It looks very Dungeons and Dragons-esque to yeah. me. And I'm excited for that. And I do love good fantasy. I haven't read a good one in a very long time. And I will say the, like, the not-so-great reviews are complaining because there's not enough romance, which you will like. So then it's going to be right up my alley. <laughs> yes. I don't need any of that. <laughs> yes, but hopefully we will really like it and we'll have, like, a great review for you guys. Either way, we're going to review it because, like, obviously, like, not everybody likes the same thing. So we're just going to convince you guys to come in and get it anyway because... Yep. It's the library, and obviously we're not going to tell you, hey, don't check this out, just because we didn't like it. Yeah, always read something. Don't take our word for it. Like, yeah. read what you love. And even if I don't like it, and I'm pretty judgmental. <laughs> um, never, yeah. If you like romance, oh, no, probably don't ask Bethany for, like, a recommendation. <laughs> don't ask me. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. I'll try, but you're going to be disappointed in me. Like, if you want, like, historical fiction, ask Bethany. If I you want romance, gal. ask Samantha. So. That's right. And everybody yes. loves different things. And you need to read what you love and also read what we suggest. So and there. also branch out and read something that you don't ever normally read. Because I was, like, totally against, like fantasy like throne of glass stuff this like that true. i was like no absolutely not that is not what i read and now she's a fan fan i am deep i probably spent like thousands of dollars on books this past year because of that so thank you sarah j mass for um making me broke that rabbit hole and then yes <laughs> falling face first into the world of fantasy you would probably yeah. really like that one series that i just finished i'll just suggest it to you oh uh, the one with a little bit of romance that you liked yeah I did really like it a lot. You can't, I can't tell you what it is, though, because you can't get it, so. Yeah, so we have to keep that quiet. We have to keep that on the hush-hush, but if you want, like, me to, like, give you some of that DL, like, on the side. <laughs> you can email us at offthebooks at khcpl.org, and we just hope you guys we'll share keep on secrets. listening yeah. and ask us for book suggestions, um, tell us what you're reading, um, tell us if you do or don't like a book that we've reviewed interact with us and we will see you guys for our next episode. Yeah. Bye. Bye.